in the last video we made the most simple ray tracer in Blender and in this video we will make the spheres look a bit more 3D. So what we did is we created a ray here. Let's select these nodes and press Ctrl J and F2 to rename it. So here we generate the ray. We have a starting point, the ray origin and a direction. And then we intersected the ray with our scene. So we have eight spheres in our scene. Let's make this a lot simpler and only add one sphere. So what this sphere node does, we give it the ray as an input and we get back if we hit the sphere or not. So the pixels are white if we hit the sphere and they are black if we don't hit the sphere. And inside the sphere node, so what we did first was we calculated this length here. Let's also press Ctrl J and F2. Uh, we call this L. And then we calculated this distance here. Uh, let's call this B. And then we compare this length with our radius. This mask tells us if we hit the sphere or not. So right now our sphere node outputs this mask, but we can output different information too. So this length here was L and this was B. If we want to do more complex things, we need to have the intersection point. This is the point where our ray hits the surface. To get to the hit point, we need this length here. Let's call this D. This is the distance from our camera, from the ray origin, to the hit point. How far we have to travel along the ray to hit the sphere. The way we can calculate this is we need this length here. Let's call this A. So once we have A and L, we can easily calculate D. We subtract the small piece A from L. So all we need now is A. And as you can see, we can draw a triangle here. So let's call this C. And this is a right angle triangle. So we can easily use the Pythagorean theorem. We have B and we also have C because this length is the same as the radius. So this is actually also the radius. This is the Pythagorean theorem and if you want to get A, we subtract B squared and then we take the square root. So we have the formula to calculate A. Let's implement this formula in Blender. We use a math node and we have to square B, so we multiply B by itself. It's the same thing. Then we do the same for the radius because this is our C. So this here is b, then we just subtract b squared from c squared and then we take the square root. So this here is a and now to calculate d we just have to subtract a from l. So we subtract a from l, the distance. And now if we output this so let's move the sphere a bit closer to the camera and let's also change the radius a bit. And as you can see, we already see some sort of sphere here. But there's one problem. What happens if the ray doesn't intersect the sphere? If we shoot a ray in this direction, we would miss the sphere and the ray would go to infinity. So D would be infinity. So in Blender we want the output of the sphere function to be infinity Instead of infinity, in Blender we could use just a really large number. We can just add a value node and let's set this to 1000. So if we hit the sphere, we want to output this distance that we calculated. And if we don't hit the sphere, we want to output 1000. We can use our mask for this and we can mix between them based on the mask. There's the mix RGB node to do this. It's actually for color, but we can also use it for numbers. So we want to mix between this value and this based on this mask. And if we display this, we get exactly that. So if we go outside, we actually have a sphere. And now we can also add multiple spheres. If we have two spheres that are behind each other and we shoot a ray through both of them. So we want to know which one is in front of the other. We just use this distance and we compare it to the other distance. It doesn't matter how many spheres or objects we have in our scene, we always want the lowest value. So we can just use a math node 
and use the minimum option. This always outputs the smallest of the two. So if we display this and we move the sphere around, we already have two spheres overlapping. And if we move the one behind closer, to make this easier to see, we can use a color ramp node. So you can see that the two spheres intersect properly. Now, if we want to place a lot of spheres, we would always have to do this with the minimum node. And to avoid this, we want to do this inside the sphere node. So we use a value node. If we don't have any objects in our scene, the distance should be infinity. So in our case, 1000 units. Let's call this our distance. And inside the sphere node, we want to use the mass node here with minimum. Now let's create a new input. We can rename this to distance and move it up. And we want to compare this distance to the one we just calculated. So now we just did all that inside here. So now we start with a distance and then we add a sphere to the scene. So let's rename this to add sphere. And now we can add multiple spheres and we just feed the distance values through all the nodes. And these nodes always add a new sphere. And now we can add as many spheres as we want and they will all display properly. So here we generate our ray and here we intersect this ray with objects in our 3D scene. We start with an empty scene and then we add more and more spheres to it. And at the end we get the final distance of this 3D scene. So what we are currently displaying is the distance here. How far along the ray we travel to intersect the sphere. And now we want to know a bit about the hit point. In which direction is the surface oriented? So we need the surface normal vector at this hit point. In a sphere to get this vector is very simple. We know that this vector goes through the center of the sphere. So all we need to do is to calculate the hit point P and then find the vector that points from the center of the sphere to the hit point. And because it's a vector, it doesn't matter if it's here or here. To calculate the coordinates of this point P, of the hit point, we can start at the camera at the ray origin. We go in the direction of the ray direction vector and then we travel along this ray by the distance d to get to the hit point p. So in the add sphere function we can use a vector mass node. So we start at the ray origin, we add the vector to the point and then we scale the vector by how far we want to go. The distance. So this is our hit point, the coordinates of the hit point and to get the vector from the center of the sphere to the point we subtract the starting point from the end point. So the sphere center is the position and we subtract it from the hit point. But because this is a direction vector, we always want to normalize it. So it has the length one. And here we have the normal vector of the sphere. And we can try to display this. The three coordinates of the vector x, y and z are displayed as the colors red, green and blue. So all the surfaces that point up in the y direction will be green. And if a surface points in the x direction, it is red. So this is our normal information. And we want to feed this through like our distance value. So let's create a new vector with a combined x, y, z node. And we can call this our normal vector and we just leave it at zero and we also want to feed this through our nodes. So inside the sphere node we can add a new output so this was our distance and if we press n this is our normal vector. We also want to add a input so let's make a new input and call this normal and it should be a vector. So now we also have a normal input here. So what we now want to do is we get the normal information from the scene into this node as an input and now we want to add the new normal information on top. We can do this with a mix RGB node as before. So by default we want to have the normal map from before. And now we want to add our new normal vector to it. But only if the ray hits this sphere. So we can try using our mask from before and if we display this and display our normal vector and we also have to feed the normal vector through 
It seems to work fine. But if we compare it to our distance, you can see that we have a sphere in front of it. And here it's in the back. So what we can do in the sphere node, we need to have a different mask. We only want to overlay the new normal information on top of the old one if this sphere is the closest to the camera. So we need to do a test with a math node. So here's the new distance. If the new distance, if it's less than the old distance, so we have this here, then we want to have the new normal information replace the old one. So this is our new mask and it works. Here we replace the old normal information, this here, with the new normal information, but only if the new sphere is the closest. So we made this new mask here. I think we can also display this. Yes, we get this mask. And before we use this mask here, which gives us the whole sphere. We only want the part that is not obstructed by something else. Okay, now from our scene, we get back some information. We get back the distance of the whole scene and the information about in which direction the surfaces are pointing. What we can now do is we can shade this scene. And for this, we can just use a vector mass node and set it to a dot product. And here we can enter some lighting vector, but it should be normalized. Now we can control if the light should come from above, from the side, or from the front. We don't have any shadows yet. This is a topic for another video. Let's add a floor plane to our scene so we can, so we just add another sphere. We pass the distance through. To make a floor plane, we can use a really large sphere. Let's move it down by, I don't know, 3000 units. And let's also make the radius 3000 units. So we have some sort of ground plane.